Good morning, my dear brothers and sisters. Today, liturgically, the church does celebrate the second Sunday after Easter, and my sermon this morning will be based upon the gospel appointed for today, coming to us from the 10th chapter of the Gospel of St. John, which I will read to you right now. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But he that is a hireling, and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming, and leaveth the sheep, and fleeth. And the wolf catcheth them, and scattereth the sheep. The hireling fleeth, because he is a hireling, and careth not for the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and know my sheep and am known of mine. Even as the Father knoweth me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep, and other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. Here endeth the gospel. Praise be to thee, O Christ. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, my dear friends and our Lord Jesus Christ. In the passage that I just read to you, coming to us from the 10th chapter of the Gospel of St. John, St. John is so kind to, again, write down these words for us, the words of our blessed Savior, And certainly they are very appropriate in the sense that our blessed Lord is speaking about himself being known as the Good Shepherd. And I say these words are very appropriate because if you look throughout the Old Testament, if you look throughout all the books of the Old Testament, you will see many references indeed to God as the Good Shepherd or as the Shepherd. For example, we look at Psalm chapter 95, verse 7. It says, He is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. And then elsewhere in the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 40, verse 11, we read the following. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and will carry them in his bosom and gently lead those that are with young. So you see, dear friends, it was certainly appropriate, it was certainly apropos that our blessed Lord would speak of himself as the good shepherd. Because as I just made reference to, not only through the books of the Old Testament were there many references made in regards to God as shepherd, but on a practical sense, if you will, when our blessed Lord was speaking, when our blessed Lord was making this reference, you have to keep in mind that again, shepherds were seen throughout all of Israel because instead of Israel being known as an agricultural giant, in other words, growing things because of the soil, the rocky soil and so forth, there were many shepherds, again, who would leave, lead, I should say rather, flocks of their sheep. And this was seen throughout all of the region, throughout all of Israel, Judea, and so forth. And so as a result, when our blessed Lord spoke of this and made reference to this, the people understood exactly what he meant. Because keep in mind, shepherds were very distinctive in regards to, I would assume, how they looked, yes, but distinctive in regards to the role that they played and very distinctive in regards to, again, their commitment to their jobs. In other words, the commitment to the sheep that they were in charge of. 
Because bear in mind, dear friends, again, for a shepherd, the life certainly was hard and difficult because, again, the shepherd would not like so many of us do, we go in and we work our eight to five jobs, so to speak, and we punch in at the beginning, then we punch out at the end, and then we go home. No, the shepherd would literally be out in the fields with the sheep. Again, he would lead the sheep where he would want them to go, where they needed to go. He would never be off duty, in other words, because he was always with the sheep, watching over them, leading them, protecting them, protecting them not only from other wolves or, or beasts of the wild, if you will, but also from robbers who were interested in robbing the sheep, stealing them away. So in other words, as I made reference to, the shepherd would always have to be on guard. He would never be off duty, as I stated. And to me, the most amazing thing of all is that, again, sheep recognized the voice of their master. So the shepherd would, again, speak to the sheep, and they would recognize his voice. Certainly, this is why I stated in what I read to you, dear friends, this passage from St. John's 10th chapter, our blessed Lord makes, in my opinion, in this snippet, if you will, from this 10th chapter, our blessed Lord makes two main points. That A, the shepherd is willing to lay down his life for the sheep. And as I made reference right now a little bit ago, dear friends, again, I think I showed that very well. The shepherd was always with the sheep, leading the sheep, taking care of the sheep. And again, certainly they would be willing to lay down their life for their sheep because again, that was their livelihood. That was their life. This is why, dear friends, our Lord makes the distinction between someone who is truly a shepherd who cares for his sheep, who truly takes care of his sheep, who the sheep are a part of him, so to speak, as opposed to contrast this with, as our Lord says, the hireling. The hireling is someone who was just there to make a buck. And then he leaves. The sheep get eaten by a wolf. Eh, I'm still going to get my pay. The other point, <coughs> excuse me, dear friends. The other point, as I stated, that in my estimation, the Lord was making in this passage was that the sheep know their master. And this is certainly true of knowing the master's voice. Again, as I stated again, this is why our Lord said, and this is in, from verse 14 of this 10th chapter, I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and am known of mine. If we fast forward in the same chapter, fast forward now to verse 27, excuse me, still in this chapter 10. In verse 27, our Lord makes the claim, my sheep hear my voice and I know them. Then they follow me. As I made reference to dear friends again, the sheep would indeed know their master's voice. The sheep would know and recognize the voice of the shepherd who took such good care of them, who led them, led them to be fed, took care of them, watched over them, lived with them. They knew his voice. They recognized his voice. So this is why, again, our Lord makes the claim that he indeed is the good shepherd and that we 
know his voice. Our Lord lived with us. Our Lord certainly looks after us. While he was here on earth, did he not look after the apostles and look after the disciples? When our blessed Lord prayed, he said, I have not lost one of them. He prayed. Certainly, again, from 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 19, we hear, The Lord knoweth them that are his, and let every one that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Friends, here lately it has been on my mind. I guess it has caused me to think because of various events that have happened here recently, but it has caused me to think and ponder and pray and reflect. Each and every one of us, you and me as well, each and every one of us, we need to be prepared. Prepared in the sense that we never know when it will be our, when it will be our time. So as a result, we need to be prepared for when our time is up. So that you see, dear friends, we can be ready and prepared and welcome to spend eternity with our blessed Savior. The point that I'm making is, of course, our Lord laid down his life for us, yes. Our Lord again hung on the cross for us so that we could be saved from our sins and be forgiven for these sins, yes. But that being said, we have to do our part by saying yes to God and no to the world. The world, you see, and the devil uses the allurement, if you will, of the world to lead so many souls astray from God. And as I state so often when I teach and when I preach, the things of the world, again, they divert our attention. They grab our attention away. So that instead of looking straight forward towards God, looking straight forward towards heaven, looking straight forward towards spending eternity and preparing for eternity with our blessed Savior, we are caught off guard because we are enamored with the things of the world, with the pleasures of the world, with, again, the things that the world is trying to grab our attentions away from. Again, dear friends, we need to, again, always keep our eyes forward so that we are always looking towards God and always looking towards the things of God. Bear in mind, dear friends, this is why I say these world, these words. Because, again, we should not be caught off guard. We should always be prepared, again, when our time comes. So, again, let us spend this day, again, thanking God for the many blessings that he's bestowed upon us. The gift of life, the gift of freedom, the gift of forgiveness, the gift of salvation that God offers freely to each and every one of us. And that let us also pray again that we will have the insight to always stay close to our blessed Lord, to know his voice, to always stay close, as I like to say, to his most sacred heart, so that we can spend this life with him in preparation for the next life, which, of course, eternity spent in his blessed presence. And so I ask God this day to bless you, to bless you richly, to bless you, your friends, your family, 
your loved ones. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, God bless each and every one of you, dear friends.